Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. So, here we go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's Bundesverband Alternative Investments Webinar. Um, yeah, we are facing omnipresent challenges, uh, inflation, low growth, uh, rising volatility in the capital markets, a Russian aggressor in the Ukraine. So I'm pleased um, to welcome with me our cooperation partner and um, association member, AXA Investment Managers. And together we'd like to address the question why it is imperative to consider your exposure in secured finance. Uh, please welcome with me uh, today Xavier Lassau, he's G CFA charter holder and senior portfolio manager structured finance at AXA Investment Managers and he will present and lecture today's topic. So before we start, just let me briefly remind you of uh, about our upcoming events in the next week. So um, first of all, next week, another webinar, uh, this time about cat bonds as diversificator in times of geopolitical uncertainty, um, next Tuesday at 11 o'clock. And then in a few weeks, I'd be happy to welcome uh, yeah, you, you again uh, in Frankfurt at our uh, BAI anniversary celebration. So BAI is celebrating 25th anniversary on the 23rd of June uh, in West Half here in Frankfurt. And I would be really happy to see lots of you again uh, live and in person. So um, just for the ones of you who are attending the first time a BAI webinar, Feel free to ask questions anytime. Uh, please use the GoToWebinar toolbox on the right side, and there you can chat or ask questions to Xavier and me, and Xavier will be happy to answer your questions um, after his presentation. And of course, if there are any more questions after the webinar, feel free to contact me or um, Xavia or Jörg Schumburg or anyone else from AXA uh, Investment Managers. Um, and of course, the question always appear, the webinar slides, the presentation will be available after the webinar and also the recording of the web. So now I like to hand over Xavia, are you Ready? Are you good to start your presentation? Yes. Uh, thanks Ready. a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Philip. I'm just checking if I can play with the slide. Okay. Okay, it's working. Um, thanks a lot, Philip. Uh, guten Tag, everyone. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to attend this uh, BIE uh, webinar. <clears throat> so today the topic is about secured finance. And amongst um, the several messages that, uh, that will be covered, uh, the objective is that you remember at least two of them, hopefully more. Uh, but the first one is that secured finance uh, should be uh, one of the cornerstone in any long-term strategic asset allocation. And that two, secured finance is, in our view, designed to perform in the current environment, uh, fueled by inflation, low growth, potential recession, and ongoing negative headlines. In terms of agenda, we will first go through the opportunity of the secured finance, or those may be um, less familiar with this uh, topic. In the second stage, we'll dive a bit deeper into all the underlying asset classes. Then we will cover how ESG is integrated to secure finance. And before the Q&A, we'll finally show you uh, the type of solution that exists. So if we start with the, the overview of the secure finance. First, what is secure finance? Secure finance encompasses all debt instruments that are collateralized by tangible assets on which you have a pledge in case of default. 
And one particular characteristic is that all the assets, with some exception, are floating rates. It's a sound and diversified investment universe that we have split in three distinct parts. The consumer universe, the corporate universe, and the real asset universe. Each of them being accessible to public or private format. So for example, if we take the consumer asset, which is roughly 1.5 trillion euro, you can invest in a public format through uh, asset-backed securities, such as consumer, auto loan ABS, or residential mortgage-backed securities. Or you can access the same collateral in a private format by financing directly portfolios of auto loan or residential mortgage. The corporate assets, which is almost 3 trillion universe, can be invested through CLOs or senior secured loan for the public part, or middle market and portfolio financing of corporate loan in the private part. And finally, we have the real assets, uh, which is roughly 7 trillion, where you can invest in the public part into CMBS, so commercial mortgage backed securities, or in the private format through commercial real estate debt and infra debt. So the first message here is that Secured Finance expand your traditional credit universe by around 30 trillion in a scalable and diversified way. Now, um, here is a recap of what can bring Secured Finance in a long-term allocation. We have put on the left what could be a standard allocation composed of investment grade credit, high yield, private debt and equity. And in this case, you're exposed to, for the investment grade credit part, relatively low spread. You're also e exposed to concentration to corporate risk and uh, specifically when you take high yield and private debt. So the idea of secured finance is that you could incor incorporate it depending on your risk appetite between your high yield and investment grade credit bucket. And this way, you uh, will benefit from the structural protection provided by the additional safety from this asset class, from the extra diversification, thanks to the exposure to consumer and real asset risk, and not only corporate. And finally, you will benefit from the significant yield premium at equivalent risk rating with stable and predictable cash flow. The yield premium is put uh, in this slide into perspective, where we have put on the right-hand chart, a chart comparing the spread above asset swap of some secured finance assets, both on the private and public side, compared to the traditional credit index. And there are several things to note. The first one is that all the assets represented here, at the exception of middle market loan, are either uh, rated publicly investment grade, or have an equivalent rating and quality of investment grade for the private transaction. The second thing is that the spread here, it's not historical return. It's pure current spread or income per asset. So for example, if I take the triple B of CLOs, it does pay a coupon of 4.5% uh, above asset swap. Three, the maturity is also really diverse. You can invest in the very short term in some public uh, or private ABS with a credit duration of less than two years, or invest in the long end uh, with infra debt, for example, with more than seven years of uh, credit duration. And finally, it's important that all the uh, asset, sub asset classes that we have put here are high quality and robust transactions. So you can see that by targeting secured finance for a similar risk uh, compared to traditional credit, you can obtain, in average, two to 300 basis uh, uh, point premium. And again, it's not by investing into distressed or discounted assets. No, it's quality assets purchased at par, and the return comes from the coupon. So now the question is where uh, this premium comes from. And uh, this additional premium is explained by three main factors. The first one is what we call specific premium. The transactions are a bit more complex than traditional credit. They can be a tranching mechanism. And we have also different types of actors 
changing the pricing compared to the traditional asset classes. There is also a liquidity premium that can be um, little for uh, public ABS or CLOs and can be maximized for uh, pure private transaction. And finally, there is scarcity of capital. So what we call scarcity of capital is the fact that due to the retreat of banks from the financing world uh, under Basel III, companies have to rely on the private market uh, in order to be financed and they need to let some premium on the table. Now, if we move uh, to the current uh, situation and current micro environment, it is fair to say that the picture uh, since the beginning of the year is pretty ugly. And the forecast for the rest of 2022 and 2023 is not really better. We have no view on when and how the Ukrainian war conflict would end. Potential rising tension also in Taiwan and Korea. We have a persistent higher level of inflation with level not seen in decades. Reaction from central banks are scrutinized and provide additional volatility on rates, which impact all the asset class. We have downward GDP revision. The Bank of England last week uh, said that there will be a potential recession in 2023. US banks are also warning against a US recession, etc. And we have also this never ending lockdown, uh, for example, in China, that impacts supply chain, consumption, and global growth. But in this displeasing context, we do see one area uh, that is key in our investment approach, which remain robust, and I'm talking about the fundamentals. So if you take the consumer, the corporate or real assets, we do see solid cornerstones where you can build your investment on. And to mention some of them, we have in the corporate space, uh, the Q1 of this year result has been quite strong with good margin that could allow corporate, in our view, to absorb some inflation. We have also the loan default rate that is forecasted to remain at historical low level. On the consumer space, the unemployment rate is also at an historical low level and keeps getting uh, lower. Last week, we had the number for April. We had an all-time low in the Eurozone with 6.8%. We are at 3.6% in the US, 2.7% in Japan. And finally, on the real estate side, we do see massive demand for new asset class that have emerged, such as life science, life science data center, or logistics. Therefore, we do strongly believe that investing into high quality assets that will be the less impacted in case of recession floating rates to be immune against uh, rising rates, and high income that could offset the ongoing volatility can be a key to navigate in uh, this current environment. And this is exactly uh, what secured finance offers with the characteristic I mentioned. You can adapt your defensive positioning with short dated transaction or highly rated. You benefit from the structural protection that provides you an edge against idiosyncratic risk. All the instruments of floating rates. You have an extra diversification with all the jurisdiction and different uh, risk with the consumer, real asset and corporate. And finally, you have potentially the highest carry of all the fixed income world. The next section, uh, we are going to dive deeper into each universe in terms of type of collateral, opportunity, risk, and return. Starting with the consumer assets. So when you invest into consumer assets, you invest in transactions that are secured by thousands of consumer loans. And they're really loans of our day-to-day -day life, such as residential mortgage, credit card, auto loan, student loan. And this transaction has the particularity to be first extremely granular, 
For example, certain auto loans are composed of more than 100,000 loans. And two, they give an access on a diversifying asset class linked to the real economy and not easily investable in the traditional fixed income. Why we do think uh, now is a good timing. As I mentioned, we have excellent fundamentals on the consumer. Historical low level of unemployment and historical high saving rates for the consumer. The performance has been quite stellar uh, for the recent full credit cycle, including uh, 2020. And you have a strong pickup versus traditional uh, fixed income at equivalent rating. In terms of return, what can we expect? For a public transaction, the pricing is between Euribor plus 200 to Euribor plus 350 basis points for investment grade rating. And on the private side, you are between uh, Euribor plus 300 to Euribor plus 500 for investment grade quality. And the weighted average life, uh, the credit duration, it's, it's quite short, between two to four years, uh, due to the underlying nature of the loan. In terms of risk driver, it's a statistical approach based on macro fundamental, such as unemployment or consumer wealth. Priced recently at Euribor plus 250 basis points for one year duration. And on the private side, we have an investment in a private UK consumer ABS at the senior level for Euribor plus 325 basis points for 1.5 year duration. To illustrate the performance, we have put two charts. The first one on the left is the payment areas for the last 10 years of the uh, European consumer loan. And what is interesting to know is that payment areas are generally six to 12 months leading indicators for potential default. As currently, we are still at an historical low level, so no increase of default is expected in the near term. On the right, we show the chart um, of a reposition rate of houses of, uh, of, of, of flat for the UK residential market. And as you can see, that the reposition rate stands currently at 0%, and that even if there is a material increase of the of default and of reposition rate, the house will be sold to cover any loss, meaning that almost no loss is expected even in a dark scenario. If we move to corporate assets, uh, we invest in transactions that are mainly backed by senior secured loans. It can be uh, pulled uh, into hundreds of loans when it comes to CLO or portfolio financing, or it can be one single loan when it comes to uh, broadly syndicated loan or middle market loan. And the idea uh, through the loan market is that you invest in a different type of corporate risk, which focuses on the secure part and which exhibits the highest recovery rate within the corporate risk. Sorry. Uh, why now? Uh, because, as I mentioned, the default on loan remains at historically low level. We have better quality and better covenant in private transactions since the COVID crisis. And we have very significant uh, spread for private strategy that I've not tightened so much. In terms of return, what we can expect, Euribor plus 220 to Euribor plus 450 for investment grade level. On the private side, we have Euribor plus 400 to Euribor plus 500 at investment grade quality. Uh, and this time, the weighted average life is a bit longer than consumer assets, which is uh, five to seven years in average. In terms of risk driver, of course, it's linked to the corporate. We have corporate default risk, corporate leverage, uh, political risk. Typical example of CLO debt tranche uh, rated triple B uh, that has priced at Euribor plus 475 basis points in March 2020, 
uh, during uh, the sell-off. And we had an investment of a portfolio financing global large corporate at the mezzanine level that has priced at zero rebor plus 400 basis points for four year duration. We have selected two graphs to illustrate the robust fundamentals. The chart on the top shows the historical default rate of the public senior secure loan, so BSL. And you can see that as we speak, we are at 29 basis points for US and 62 in Europe. And our forecast is that it should uh, remain below the historical average of, of 2% in the coming years. The table at the bottom shows the historical recovery, sorry, uh, the historical recovery rate for all kind of debt, uh, depending its seniority. So you can see that the first uh, line is the first line bank loan, so the senior secured loan. Then you have a uh, second line, you have a bond, you get unsecured debt. And uh, for the uh, last 40 years, the senior secured loan has exhibited a recovery rate of more than 60%. So we have the highest recovery rate. We are close to the lowest level of default, meaning that in terms of defensive positioning, it's uh, really a sweet spot. If we move to the real assets, <coughs> so this transaction are backed by commercial real estate debt or infra debt. You access the real estate market on the debt side with strong uh, structural protect protection, strong covenant, and low LTV. Why now? Uh, because we have seen a market dislocation uh, since the COVID with uh, the loser of the COVID and the winner of the COVID that uh, I will show a bit, a bit later. We saw also a strong repricing. And you have the ability to have a good premium when you uh, source some size and that's your player that offers a strong track record. In terms of target on the public part, you can have Euribor plus 200 to Euribor plus 350 basis points at investment grade level. And on the private side, you have Euribor plus 250 to Euribor plus 300 at, again, investment grade quality. In terms of risk driver, It's of course the uh, cap rate macro play. So, so Javier, this is Philip. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, I think we got some connection problems. Yes, sorry, I, I've been disconnected. Yeah, no, it's better. Okay, sorry. Okay, I can um, hear you again, great. Sorry, again. Um, where was I here? Okay, sorry. Um, so as opposed to consumer or corporate risk, the, the market is quite dislocated in the real asset side, with assets that, as I mentioned, have suffered uh, since COVID and expected to, to do so, such as shopping centers, hotels, or even offices. And we saw the emergence of new asset class, life science data center logistics. And with regard to the residential market, it is uh, by itself heavily dislocated, as shown in the first chart that shows the dispersion of total return for the US properties. And you can see that uh, for the past 20 years, it used to be uh, in average with the market trend. 
And since 2020 and 2021, we saw um, property US total return between minus 30% to uh, plus 30%. And the ESG factor has been an important one uh, where you can see on the second uh, chart, the rent of leader energetic offices, so LEED, have significantly outperformed non-LEED. And finally, the final graph shows the what we call mega trend uh, when we think the value is. Uh, historically, for the past uh, 10 to 15 years, the um, vacancy rate of logistics went from uh, 40% and now are decreasing toward 2%. Uh, it's really uh, the type of what we call mega trend and where we see uh, that the value is in the real asset market. So we are done with the deep dive. Hopefully it was not uh, too much information and helps you uh, better assessing the secured finance universe. So now I suggest that we move to an important topic, which is uh, how the ESG is integrated within the secured finance. So the ESG framework is obviously at the center of the secured finance and share uh, common, uh, common uh, cornerstones with the traditional fixed income, such as typically exclusion policy. But when it comes to finance a German consumer uh, that want to purchase a car, looking at controversial weapon can be out of the subject. And this is why special uh, methodologies and approaches have been developed to take it into consideration to assess the ESG risk. So typically on the consumer side, the industry use CO2 emission for auto ABS, energy efficiency label for residential mortgage, and assess the, the uh, social risk when it comes to credit card loan. On the corporate side, the industry uh, assess, of course, the underlying, underlying loan uh, when they do the ESG approach, but also at the bank or CLO manager. Level approach, which had another level of ESG. And finally, on the real assets, we typically look at EP environmental impact and risk, sponsor, and so on. But secured finance ESG value a new use to finance user proceeds. Here, you directly finance an asset and hence received uh, the cash flow from the uh, ESG asset that you finance. So before answering any question, we wanted to show you an example of solution um, if you want to invest in uh, secured finance. So of course, you have the ability to invest in the single sleeves that, uh, that I mentioned during this presentation, such as a dedicated fund or mandate in ABS, uh, in CRE debt or middle market loan. But we wanted uh, to present you a solution that would allow you to extract the best, the best of each asset class by combining public and private opportunities across the consumer, corporate, and real asset risk. So the key advantage of doing so is that on the public market, you have the ability to capture market opportunities and capitalize on market price dislocation. As we speak, there are many asset classes where uh, on the public side, it's more interesting than in the private financing, uh, and we are able to capture these uh, discounted opportunities. With the public side, you of course, uh, you're able to provide investors with liquidity. And when it comes to the private market, you capture a specific market premium, illiquidity premium, and it allows you to have no market, no mark-to-market volatility. So a solution could be one 
solution that encompasses everything. You access the, bo uh, both of the best world. You exploit inter and intra market inefficiencies. When it comes to private market opportunities, you uh, have the ability to be patient and selective as you can invest in the public market in the meantime. And you have diversified assets addressing all the macroeconomic issues. Here we just uh, show a strategy that uh, we manage uh, that invests in both private and public uh, secured finance. And we have compared it to, uh, since the last six months, to other uh, traditional asset classes. So as you can see, the European IG credit has dropped by almost 8% since the beginning of, uh, of uh, October and November, uh, halfly due to the rates, half due to the uh, credit spread widening. The euro yield has also heavily suffered with almost uh, 8% since, uh, since November. The uh, single sleeve of senior, of uh, sorry, secured finance have also underperformed, but less than traditional credit. We have put senior ABS and single ACLOs that uh, only uh, have taken the credit spread widening and due to the floating rate aspect have been immune to the uh, to the rate sell-off. And then we have uh, our uh, secured finance strategy, which has outperformed the market uh, uh, in, on a relative basis. And it is due to three main factors. So the first one is that um, the initial positioning uh, of the secure finance strategy has been really defensive, as secure finance allow you to have very short dated or highly rated uh, position that still provides strong carry, two to three uh, percent. You have the uh, private assets in the strategy that have provided some protection in terms of mark to market, and typically the, as a uh, as a number, the, the strategy had. Uh, 25% of private assets. And the global carry of the strategy being at roughly 4%, uh, meaning that the income also absorbs a significant part of the mark to market with almost uh, 40 basis points per month. Uh, so typically in March, uh, the, the strategy did plus 10 basis points, meaning that it was minus 30 in terms of mark to market and plus 40 basis points in terms of income. Again, showing that when you have the ability to mix the asset class and to take um, the best for uh, all the consumer corporate real assets on the private and on the public, you can really uh, have a robust and resilient um, investment. So, okay, that's it for the, for the presentation. Uh, and now I'm more than happy to, to answer any question. Yes, first of all, thank you very much, Xavier, for your presentation. Um, as I already said, feel free to ask questions. Um, so I can't see any questions yet. But of course, um, if there are questions, um, in the meantime, feel free to contact AXA or contact uh, me or my colleague Roland uh, and we will forward your question um, to the relevant person at AXA Investment Managers. Um, so yes, once again, thank you very much, Xavier. Um, so um, we were pleased to have you here in the webinar. Um, if you have any final words, feel yeah, it free. Was, uh, yeah, it, it was a pleasure to attend this and uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, we'll, uh, we, we'll attend in person, I'll attend in person to the BIA webinar uh, uh, next, ne next time. Yes, and I'm looking forward to meet you at our annual uh, conference next year. So um, thank you very much, Xavier, and yeah, goodbye. Have a good time, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I'm happy to welcome you back again next week in our next BAI webinar. Thanks a lot.